So you might think to yourself, why do we bother trying to do all the render target stuff? Why don't we just recreate the mesh with particles? Well, you can do that. It's a little bit more involved and there is actually an example inside the project. In this system, you will find three emitters. One is the cable emitter, just like we saw before. Another one is the vertex emitter, which will be for every vertex in the mesh. And the last one is the cable mesh emitter, which is for every triangle. The first thing we need to take note of is actually up in the system where we set a rope mesh. This is a static mesh data interface, which we then use to set things like the number of particles to spawn based on the number of vertices. So if we go into this um, get mesh vert data, you can see we're getting for every vertex the position, the normal, the tangent, the color and the UVs and basically just shoving this onto different attributes on each particle. So that's enough data to reconstruct the vertices for the mesh. Now we need to deform it. So this is in the skinning from particles module and if we dive in we can see that we basically have an attribute reader variable and then we have the skinning u variable. So we basically take this and convert it into an index so that we can sample two different positions. We then go ahead and basically get initial values for what the normal, the tangent, and the position was, and then we transform them like we would have transformed the static mesh with world position offset and the changed normal and tangent. So that's all well and good. We have our vertices and we have deformed them and now we just need the triangles in between. We need to start getting vertex IDs. After that, we then need to get all the information, but we also need to compress it so that we're able to pass it over into our material because we still need to get the normal and the tangent and, you know, UV coordinates and color over. And you might think, that's not so bad. We, uh, after all, have all these things typically available to us, right? Well, we don't because in this case we can't use only one, we need three of them because for every vertex there is a different normal, a different tangent, a different UV coordinate, a different color. And so we need to store not just the one that the particle normally would have, but two more on top of that. So if we dive in here, you can see it starts, it starts growing to something a little more. Um, what's basically happening is that we're doing every vertex separately. The first one just pipes straight into the values that you already have for the particle. But for the other ones, we start to have to pack things down. So to specify this a little more, what we're basically doing is that we're taking our V1 and V2, which is in this case our normal and our tangent, but it could really be any two vectors that you believe don't need a full 32-bit precision. We then convert them into 16-bit values that are unsigned integer 3s, and there's a convenient function for that. So what we're basically doing is that we're getting three 32-bit values and turning them into three 16-bit values which gives a total of 48 bits. So now we have two of those, that's 96 bits. And we want to store all of this in a vector four because the maximum we can pass over to a material are four unique vector fours. So that is four times four times 32 bit maximum. So four times 32 bit, that's 128 times four, that's 512 bit in total that we get to pack all the data that we need in. So parking tangent and normal next to UV and repeating this again, and then packing the color in the last one is the way that we manage to get everything over. And by later on, I mean right here in the dynamic material parameters where uh, you can see we set up every single attribute that we got from those particles and pipe them into every single one of the dynamic material parameters that we have. In turn, this is then piped into the material bound in the sprite renderer. And then inside the material, we can see that the dynamic parameters are used to unpack positions to get the vertex positions of two of the three vertices with the last one just stored straight in the particle position. We can see that we are unpacking the colors from another dynamic parameter. Just one float can contain all four of the eight bit values for a color. So we pack them in next to each other for two of them and the last one straight from particle color. And then the last two dynamic parameters are used to unpack the normals and tangents from half to full float. 
So now we have all the values that we need for all the vertices that are in this triangle. And then we need to do a pseudo biocentric interpolation between these values. So if you feel like putting in all that effort, you can get a rope that is made entirely out of particles, but you can see that it involves a lot more computation and a lot more management from your side.